here. So mid soon, nearly with the EMP. Chatter. In the back, Chatter comes down, finds Hawks on the Bionade. Gets he in slime. They both fall. Bumper going to be slept. EMP out from so mid soon is huge. It catches five, but so far only Kusta going down. It won't Not matter. Out of the equation. So mid soon is gone. The Bionade hits Bumper, and that is going to be it. OT takes away the Los Angeles Valiant. In front of the home crowd are the first team to deliver a loss to the Vancouver Titans in the regular season. Tanks, supports, and DPS mains, welcome to eSports in 30. If you're a Torb one trick, you're absolutely not welcome. My name is AJ Fry, and this handsome young man to my left is none other than Ronald. I'm Ron Burgundy, Renanthra Lee. Over the next half hour, we're deep diving into Overwatch League as we've crossed the halfway mark of this third stage within the exciting second season of the hugely popular eSport. Ron, how would you like me to tee you up to make fun of me today? I mean, I'm just kind of confused with the whole Ron Burgundy thing. I've never uh, seen Anchorman. It's past my time, so oh, a wow. fossil like you has to explain to me what's going on. <laughs> well, there was once a man named Will Ferrell. He was a yeah. star on a you little show called... You know he's making called... an esports movie? Will Ferrell's making an esports yeah, movie? Yeah, he's making an esports movie, like a comedy kind of thing. Shouldn't it be someone younger than Will Ferrell? I mean, the whole point is like an old dude getting into the sport. He has no idea what's going on. We okay. should look it up. All It'd right. be a fun thing to talk about. We'll, we'll try and uh, angle for some cameos in yeah. Will Ferrell's Good idea. esports movie. But for right now, we've uh, got some highlights for you. So put some Fs into chat to pay respects to our editors. Uh, we've got Nick and Noah, of course, who never get the credit that they deserve for putting together these amazing highlight reels. Have a look. <laughs> They've got working on it. Staying in the back line. Oh, Flames! Kareem! Clutch sleep, making all the difference. Shanghai Dragons down. He cancels out the EMP. Now it's a Hail Mary attempt from the Shanghai Dragons. They get the shatter in. But the Valiant pouring on the pressure. There's the grenade. They're trading back and forth. This still favors the defense and the Dragons. He's that EMP from RCK, though. Opportunity. Sinatra oh, picked out of the air by Colorax. What a shot. Oh, gets another one midair onto Super. That's what we want to see. And here comes the barrage now. No trouble at all. Colorax. They're trying to set up for this one right now. Yep. How good is it going to be for Corey? Here it comes. He gets oh, stunned. Stunned. They saw him coming in. What a play by Birdring. Heads up, Shield Bash. That was sick. Just on top of that little kiosk. Jinmu gets one before he gets put to sleep. He gets slept and like launched. Ooh. Like, oh, that's Carnage! And he's hacked, he's pushed back. Sound very even for the Florida Mayhem. Zephyr returns on the fast here. BKB gets rid of Jake. Rumor trying to stay up and shield Walkers on that backside. He needs the hit. Oh! And the Bastion, surely not. What? It's where it ends. Zephyr back into one turret mode now. Blake is struggling. Oh, Florida Blake. Mayhem have brought the house crashing down. It's just it's Blake. Blake. He's trying to hold on. Dante returns with the EMP and Blake gets the sound barrier. It's two versus three right now, but BQB falls. Dante finds the kill. Blake is down. <laughs> Zephyr <laughs> sitting in the back corner. Fade is very low and Jake returns on the Doom Fist now. He's got to be out of time. Oh, but he's no! I can't oh, believe it! it! With that Earth Shatter still. Oh, Giannis gets a kill to Bedosha, though. And now he's got the Primal Rage. Shatter comes in. It's a big one from Chester. But London need more. Giannis needs to invite him in here. He knocked Chester off. He got one. He knocked two. He got three. Giannis, he what got a play. Three. Saving the map for the Washington Justice. What a hero. Giannis makes wow. it happen. Vigilante's off from the rest of the team. Unless the Valiant can find a trade here immediately. DM going down certainly could help things. Gansu on the edge as well. He's so low after that shatter. How can he be follow up? Oh my goodness, he does! With about 10% HP, Fact Fiction goes aggro. Time in action here. So Mitsu nearly with the EMP. Shatter. In the back, Shatter comes down, finds Hawks on the Bionade. Gets he and slime. They both fall. Bumper going to be slept. EMP out from So Mitsu is huge. It catches five, but so far only Kusta going down. It won't Not matter. Jardu out of the equation. So Mitsu is gone. The Bionade hits Bumper. And that is going to be it. OT takes away the Los Angeles Valiant. In front of the home crowd are the first team to deliver a loss to the Vancouver Titans in the regular season. It is so nice to see some names and highlights from players that aren't the usual big three. I bet fans everywhere were on quite the emotional roller coaster this week. And here to help us uh, break down all of our confused feelings, we have Revival's very own Nolan Paintbrush Edwards. Welcome back to the show, Nolan. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So, How's it going? 
you know, the other day I was watching your stream and I noticed you had a webcam on your head. So I uh, before we get into the interview, just tell us what's it like living in 2077 while we're uh, stuck in 2019? Uh, sticky. There's actually a lot of residue right here on my headset. So okay. every time I take it off or put it back on, it just kind of sticks and pulls my hair. So not the best year to be in, but it's still right. pretty cool. You got to get one of them like gorilla pod uh, tripod yeah, things true. so you can mount Very your true. webcam not to your yep. face. <laughs> I just stick it on my head. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It's good it's for the people. Yeah. yeah. Um, now we got lots to talk about, but one of the big things we can touch on quickly here is the uh, the the leak, the big rumor, and has yet to be confirmed by Blizzard, but that we are moving into a locked 222 for Stage Four. What are your thoughts on locking in 222 comps? Uh, it'll be interesting. I think we will see a lot of bunker comps played. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to move away from goats though. Like we we've had it for some time now. I know the viewers don't exactly love it, but I like it as a player. But you know, it's always good to have some change. I think that's interesting that you say you like it as a player. I know a lot of players yeah. complain constantly, especially those that are stuck in brig jail. Yeah, uh, you of know, Manga Chu's like again, he's like the one guy that enjoys playing that. But from your yeah. perspective, it's it's actually fun, even though you've been doing this for over a year now. Yeah. Uh, so. As a as a Lucio player, uh, it's it's actually a really really fun meta to be in. Like boops are actually broken if you're good with them. Mm. Uh, it's just, like a really good role to kind of control tempo. And honestly, the macro game kind of like calling alts, pre-fight planning. It's it's really good in goats. I like it a lot. Oh okay. I mean <laughs> Lucio, you say is broken in goats, but I oh, think yeah. uh, a lot of the pros in the Overwatch League think something else is much broken right now. Uh, we're obviously talking about Sombra, who has really yeah, defined this stage in the Overwatch League. Uh, yes. But what we glanced over was that Ana has been having quite the resurgence as well. So as a support player, uh, why do you think Ana of all characters is also finding more success as of late? Okay, so. Uh... Specifically in Sombra Goats, you substitute the D.Va for Sombra, uh, which means Ana nades and sleeps are entirely free. So any Ana pocket, like all of her shots, uh, her rifle is entirely free. There's no chance of it getting blocked aside from barrier or LOS. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of uh, value for like purple nades. Uh, dodging EMP and using nano to survive EMP or just kind of rushing with nano is a very strong play. Uh, and then on top of that, since uh, a team playing Sombra Goats wants to kind of play slow and just play to farm EMP, uh, Ana has a lot of value compared to Zen. So Ana can sustain your dam sustain the enemy team's damage longer. Uh, he can bring more survi survivability to the game, and it's actually a lot stronger into DPS as well. Oh wow! A lot of good insight there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk uh, one of the other big stories uh, coming out of the league this week. Obviously, Titans finally falling, uh, not to the shock in the uh, Stage 2 playoffs, but in fact to the LA Valiant, mm -hmm. the only mm -hmm. ones to bring them down so far. So what is this new key to the Valiant success? What have they been doing that has given them this edge over the so far undefeated uh, Titans? Okay. So I was actually watching back the Dorado map specifically. It was map one in the set. Uh, and from their past games, it just seemed like they were playing much more as a team. They seemed very decisive, very quick. Uh, it seemed like they were responding to, responding to each other quite well. Uh, there was actually quite a few fights where maybe the Zarya was 95% to grab, or maybe their Zen was close to trance. Uh, Valiant would pop grab and hard focus the Zarya or Zen down, which is a really good sign of good team coordination and all tracking. So that was very impressive compared to some of the past games they've had. Uh, tempo shifting was very strong in that game. And uh, overall, I think Shax played very well on the Sombra as well as Kariv on main support. His, or sorry, flex support. His Ana was actually insane in that game. I think on Dorado alone, they won two to three fights just off of sleeps. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. Kariv pretty much had the game of his life. Yeah. If yes. he was ever underestimated, like, oh, you know, he, sometimes he goes to the bench for uh, Izayaki yeah. on Valiant, you know, they had some issues finding their starter. I think that mm -hmm. more or less cemented his position. Yes. I, I can't imagine I, them putting Izayaki back, uh, Izayaki back in now that Kariv is like the star of the team, more or less. Yeah. Well, kind of found his mojo. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you guys will have different uh, opinions or answers to this question, because we, we've seen kind of a stale meta story within Overwatch League the past couple of stages with the dominant teams just remaining at the top. There haven't been a lot of teams moving up and down the ladder, so to speak. But now we're seeing LA Valiant. They won their last two games. They're going up against the Spitfire and uh, the Spark moving forward. Do you think that these guys could ultimately climb their way to being a top five team from where they were sitting at, like, bottom five? Mm, interesting. I do. 
Yeah, I why? Do. I, have, I have full faith in the roster. Uh, I'm a big fan of Fact Fiction and Shaxx, of course, coming from Mayhem Academy. A little biased. <laughs> yeah, a little bias, a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm trying to peel that bias back as, as much as I can, but at the end of the day, I do truly believe they're both insane players, and I believe they have a very strong coaching staff, especially since they did snag two of my past coaches from Mayhem Academy. <laughs> so, you know, even a little more bias there, but I believe in everything they're doing there, and I'm excited to see the next two games. What do you think, Ron? Are we going to see these guys actually make it to top five? Uh, Are top they going to dethrone five, the LA huh? Gladiators as the number All one the team out of LA? I think um, for sure they're coming up games against Spark and Spitfire. Looking at a couple of weeks back, people might have been like, oh, that's a rough schedule. Right. Um, I, I definitely believe that they can win those games. It's within more so than just within the realm of possibility. I think it's fairly likely. So really? I'm, I'm with Paintbrush here. I think they're in like top eight territory. Only time that uh, will tell exactly how far up they climb, but mm. I'm optimistic for maybe even top four. All right. Agreed. Well, another team that is looking to fight their way out of uh, bottom tier, Florida Mayhem. They actually picked up their second win against the Houston Woo! Outlaws, who just took down the Shock. So it's all kinds of upsets happening now. We're now we're tied for last with Justin. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, you know, yeah. I, I watched that series, and I was uh, impressed by uh, Sia Player on, on Widowmaker. You know, like, he gets a lot of praise for his skill, but we haven't seen him being uh, able to kind of flex that with Goats being the meta mm. once again. Um, but Hogopun, too, put up a stellar performance on Zenyatta, Ana and even Roadhog and earn player of the match. So Paintbrush has worked a lot with these guys. I'm curious, do you think they finally captured that magic in a bottle? Is all Korean finally going to work out for Florida Mayhem? I'm very optimistic for them. I think we're going to see a steady climb moving forward. Um, I'm not sure how the rest of stage three will close out. I think they'll catch a few more wins in stage four, but ultimately I think we'll see a lot of the progress actually made in season three. Um, I didn't actually get to watch the Hollywood game with Saya, but I've heard like very, very strong things about his play on that map. Mm -hmm. So just knowing him as a person, I'm very, uh, very happy for him. He's very cool, very, very nice individual. So I'm glad that he's, you know, kind of getting back in there and getting out of the brig jail a little bit. <laughs> so how very much happy of... for Hago as well. Yeah, I mean, like we, we both love them. And um, I'm curious as to what makes you think that they're going to find more success now? Is it the inclusion of new players? Is it the new staff? Or is it just they had the time to work things out? Uh, I think it's, they've had the time to work things out. I think as they, the new players and new staff obviously helps. I think that was definitely needed. Um, but I think the ultimate thing is they just need time right now. Uh, Goats was a, a very synergy dependent meta. You needed a lot of play time together. You really needed to trust your teammates. And maybe in the mixed roster where there wasn't as much trust as there should have been, they couldn't really find that success. So I definitely think that that put the team kind of in a slump. Uh, maybe it hurt uh, any optimism for wins or their mentality going into games. So I think getting these wins, uh, the this, this second win specifically, is going to help snowball the, their progress forward. Wow. Well, what about uh, the Houston Outlaws? I mean, they had to be feeling so up after taking down the shock, uh, right? Yeah, the yeah. mighty shock, yeah. and then falling to mayhem. To mayhem, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, they, they, I'm sure it stings. Yeah. Well, well what is their mentality going to be moving forward? Can they come back together? Is this just like a small hurdle that they've stumbled over? Can they recover? Yeah. I, I, they definitely can. I, I believe it's a it's a small hurdle, you know. Uh, there's a there's a good saying I'm sure you guys know about GG go next. Uh, that's, that's really there all there is to it, you know. You can't win them all. It sucks it went that way, but I'm confident that they'll bring it back after that game. Mm. Hmm. So so on topic of Houston, uh, there was some recent drama with Flame and Monte Cristo about whether or not they should have picked up DPS earlier. Uh, in your opinion, do you like Houston's more flair for DPS as of recent? Is it better for them? Yeah, I, I, I do like DPS. Uh, I think it, it was a good move. Uh, I don't knock them for uh, hesitating on it at all. I think uh, there's no wrong in that decision. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know why those decisions were made. So I'm just excited to see that they're making things uh, work out for them. Well, uh, one team that has uh, been making uh, moves uh, definitely in terms of moving away from the standard 3-3 and into the Sombra 3-3, the NYXL, uh, battling against the Spitfire. Uh, why are we seeing Sombra so uh, utilized in this current stage, and why do you think NYXL have really uh, stuck to her? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say what every player in this game says, broken hero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't necessarily believe that personally. I mean, she is broken, so yeah, I do believe that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is she's in the game, so there's no reason not to play her. 
But the uh, the Sombra alt cycle, uh, whether you're playing Sombra Goats or any form of DPS with Sombra, is very, very, very aggressive. Uh, essentially, EMP is a guaranteed fight win if you play it right. So no matter what happens leading up to that EMP charge, you're basically going to at least win that fight. Mm. Is at least you should, in theory. Uh, there are ways to get around it, and you've seen like a lot of good teams have planned around it very well. Specifically, Valiant, uh, they were playing around EMP very, very well. Uh, KSF on Zarya was dodging a majority of EMPs to get bubbles off. Custa was landing his beats on EMPs. So I, I think the hero is just, just strong. The fact that you can disable players for such a long period of time and you can chain hack people. Yeah. You can, I, I mean, if you go in with Graviton Surge, uh, let's say you're playing Sombra Goats versus Goats, your Sombra can go into the back line, hack the Zen, and they don't even commit Trance because he's hacked, and then you just win the fight with Grav. Uh, and I think she's very strong at controlling tempo as well. Is this 2-2-2 lock really going to affect the utilization of Sombra moving forward? No. No? No. Oh. no. no. Ron was kind of no. nodding. I, no. uh, no. I think she mm -hmm. will still be a mainstay in the, in the meta. Yes. But I, I think she definitely has a little bit of an easier time farming things like EMP against like tank-heavy uh, tank lineups. Oh, for right. sure, for sure. Yeah. So, so if you're down one tank... You know, a little bit less the yeah. charge going around, obviously. Yeah. But she still has, you know, that infinite uh, stealth that's very hard to deal with. Um, she preys on chaos, and in a 2 2 2 composition, there's always going to be more chaos. Mm. Um, I think she'll sure. still be utilized, but just in a different way, and still be popular. Okay. Yeah, I can agree with that. Mm -hmm. That was a very nice agreement. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're on the same I was, team. Like, you hoping know? for some conflict and controversy <laughs> no, here, some we're argument. Both big brains. Like, oh, yeah, so I, will, yeah. I consider your thoughts. Uh, <laughs> no, all right. Close. Let's talk about uh, Atlanta rain. They're not raining over anyone. Yeah, not raining on much <laughs> so nowadays. It's a misnomer for sure. Uh, these guys, that, like, they're, they've been going, you know, to match five yeah, or map distance, five. Right? Yeah, but yeah. just not able to hold anything uh, down. So no. what is uh, holding these guys back why haven't they been able to come out on top hmm. uh, honestly I don't know how the uh, the map 5 dynamic is for them I don't know if maybe players are getting a little hectic a little chaotic in comms uh, maybe they're making one too many mistakes that close out the map uh, to that doesn't allow them to close out the map uh, but honestly the fact that they're taking certain teams to map 5 uh, is a good sign and I, I think the best thing for them is to just keep focusing and not letting it get to their head and uh, just keep moving forward. I think, uh, you know, the Rain and the Outlaws have something in common where uh, we see them have, like, so much potential and always push a lot of teams all the way to map five yeah. just to fail. Um, you know, in your career, Paintbrush, how do you bounce back from something like that? Just being on the cusp of victory but not being able to snatch it away. It's uh, it's hard, I'll admit. Uh, it's kind of a gut-wrenching feeling. You, you, you feel it, and in the map, uh, specifically, I think two seasons ago against Fusion Uni, uh, there was a tracer on cart, stalling cart, and you, you feel it in your bones. You're like, we're gonna win this set. You're getting all excited. You're, you're maybe slipping up, letting the emotions get to you a little bit, and then the Zenyatta comes through and kills three, and you lose the fight, you lose the set. It's, it's I mean, very it's unfortunate. You can't blame yeah, Alarm. Yeah, he's that good. You know, can't feel too yeah. bad. <laughs> I, I've gained a lot of respect for Alarm uh, over the seasons playing against him. But, you know, again, the, the good old generic gamer saying, GG, go next. There, there's really nothing else you can do. It sucks. You can review your mistakes, but if you let it eat it up and get to your head, it's not going to help you at all. I mean, you know, Fusion uh, Uni lost uh, in their fifth map against Runaway, so I'm sure Alarm's yeah. probably feeling similar feelings right now. You guys could uh, have sure. a cup of tea and talk about it. Well, someone yeah. else who's feeling very similar feelings is Cruz from Paris Eternal after they were reverse swept by Boston oh, yeah. there. And That's rough. We did see that moment in, uh, you know, after watch or watch point, I should say, where they, you know, he kicked the desk and, and threw slammed his, his mouth. Yeah, yeah. His, his yeah. mouth. Very visibly upset. Well, what do you think about uh, people letting their emotions out like that? You know, as a pro player, paintbrush is that just? I mean, it obviously, wasn't directed at a person. It was just material. Yes. And you know, if we we're watching, uh, you know, hockey or football, there's obviously a lot of uh, you know, physical cool release of yeah. tension on the yeah. field. What do you think about when it comes to esports? Is this something that we're going to see more of? Is this something that's acceptable? Yeah, is it good? Is it healthy? It's it's definitely a tough one as far as uh, the argument of it's good or it's healthy. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think anyone should knock him for it. And honestly, personally, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, I do think we need to control our emotions as players. Uh, but that 
honestly doesn't bother me. At the end of the day, we're humans. Uh, we do have emotions. And quite honestly, like we're putting our heart and souls into this game. This is everything to us. And as a player, all we want to do is win. So, you know, when we're, you're going through that set and you feel like you have it and maybe you make one mistake, it, it, it can get to you. I, I don't think anyone should knock him for it. And honestly, if anyone did want to kind of like rip into him a little bit, I would kind of challenge them to uh, put as much time and energy into this as, as players do and, yeah. you know, kind of see how it feels. Yeah, especially you're both captains too and shot caller, so a sure. lot of responsibility falls onto you there. It can't Three. be easy to swallow a loss when you've been so close, right? Yeah. It must be yeah. gut-wrenching, like you said. Very and, true. And though this is a relatively new sport in the grand, you know, scheme of things, uh, Cruz has been doing this for a while. He's been, mm -hmm. uh, you know... One of the veterans. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, mm -hmm. as a leader, it's a, a lot on his shoulders, so it's understandable he would be under that pressure. Now, you were under a bit of pressure fighting against XL2 the other day. A big 4-0 loss, probably wanted to slam your mouse <laughs> yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what are you guys going to be working on to improve going into your next game against Tea Party? Well, uh, before I get to the improvements, I'll definitely say with this loss, I, I can empathize with uh, Cruz quite well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so as far as our improvements go going into Team Party, I think the important thing is uh, just continue building trust with each other. Uh, there was a lot of situations where it was clear we weren't uh, playing as a team, uh, kind of responding to each other. Uh, I think we'll review comp swaps a lot more. There was there were a few situations where we were not necessarily surprised, but we kind of got caught up in the moment. Uh, we knew how to react to the DPS comps that they were playing. Uh, we just couldn't execute at the time, so we'll have to review that quite well, or pretty hard, uh, pretty extensively. Um, it's, it's a tough one. There, there was just a lot of individual mistakes uh, from people. I know specifically for me, uh, there was a setup we had on Nubani. It was very last fight. It was on our OT, def our OT defense. Uh, they needed one tick to cap, and we were set to hold the map and start the reverse sweep. Uh, Mani and I actually set up a, a double boot uh, to get them off high ground, displace them, uh, farm grab, and uh, close out the map. But as we, we fell off high ground, I kind of clipped the ledge and the wall ride kind of launched me back into the team. Mm. So I got caught out oh, and that, that mistake right there, that's that's kind of what really bothered me. Uh, as a player, you know, you, you, you play relatively well in the series, maybe you make a few mistakes here and there and then to be the person that makes that critical mistake that that last fight situation, it, it really, it can get to you. Yeah, it kind of makes you want to kick a desk, huh? <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit. It makes you want to flex out, but you know. Yeah. Right. Kind of well, makes you want to wall ride away from the <laughs> Yeah, very true. <laughs> very true. <laughs> well, actually, it is time for you to do just that. Thank you so much for joining us, Paintbrush. Good luck to you Thank and you Revival in your future matches. Hope you'll be back on the show to spill the tea with Appreciate us it very whenever much. we can catch you again. Cheers, awesome. buddy. Cheers. Thank you very much, guys. Ah, he was great, and I totally forgot to mention that he's got a fantastic uh, Revival sweater on oh, right there. Oh, yeah, buy it now. It's uh, <laughs> revival.gg slash something. I forgot the URL. Right. Uh, that's enough shameless self-promotion <laughs> right there. Uh, we got a couple of Overwatch general topics to cover here, uh, Mr. Ron. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, they just added subtitles to the PTR. Yes. Now, as someone who played a lot of Left 4 Dead 2 back in the Me day, too. I remember how critical the subtitles actually could so be. So useful. Yeah, when uh, like monsters would spawn, you might not hear it, but you could see the little like oh there's a spitter that just yeah spawned. boomer gurgles or exactly something. Yeah. that sort of thing so i remember fighting this guy in tarot all the time he was just so good i thought he was hacking and then he mentioned like oh Absolutely. you gotta put subtitles on and then it tells you what's happening you're like might as well oh. be a cheat might as yeah. well be and that's so, where i'm gonna stand i'm gonna think you know great for accessibility but i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna say that more like people that can hear are actually gonna be using this to get the competitive well edge. are there levels to the subtitles because i don't need yeah, subtitles for yeah. like if someone's spamming the you know doom yeah, fist line good. over and over yeah. and over it's like again. critical info only okay critical info and voice lines and stuff like that and then yeah. none at all so most people will probably turn on critical info because right it's useful how are they going to handle it when it comes to overwatch league is this something that we're actually going to see the pros oh. putting on or are no, they well, just the pros like will have whatever setups they have on their end we won't be able to see through their eyes but i'm right. sure a lot of pros will be utilizing it just like a lot of pros use colorblind mode to help with you know certain things sticking out like right, i know right. Uh, like apply in revival, he plays with like bright yellow for allies and like a 
like a really bright teal for enemies or something. Oh. So it's also our, our branding colors, coincidentally. Okay. But uh, yeah, he finds it super useful. But when you play it on stage, you'd never see that thing at all. Managed to bring it back to Revival. It's once all again, about Ron. me. It's all about us. <laughs> Esports and Thirties now sponsored by Revival. We should. We should make that happen. Uh, okay. Well, let's have a deeper uh, dive into this whole two-two-two potential. Yeah, it's a big, big news. It seems like it is all but confirmed by Blizzard at this point. Yeah, just need the official word and that's about it but everyone's saying it's coming yeah personally i am not excited about this no, I, I think it's that. that's fine that's what i'm here for i saw a much better solution proposed on reddit that i thought was brilliant and that okay. is uh preventing more than two supports okay locking it at two support characters per team sure. otherwise you can do pretty much whatever you want okay and i think that's great because it gives you the opportunity to run like a single mercy um, you know, however many tanks. You still do triple DPS. You still do triple DPS. Okay. I don't like the 222 because it just prevents all those like sneaky spur of the moment strategies that could pot potentially evolve in this game as we continue to add more and more heroes. Sure. Locking it in restricts the freedom, restricts the available possibilities for weird concoctions yeah. to upend the game entirely. I think that's a fair criticism. Um, I have two ways to rebut that. The first is, I think... And only two, because you've been locked in. <laughs> yeah, exactly, only two. But, um, you know, when we are doing uh, complete open-ended gameplay, right? Yeah. Uh, even though, in your solution, if you were to lock three, you wouldn't be able to do three support, yeah. you can still have GOAT shenanigans by doing things like Moira or Lucio, where you just kind of really compound on the healing. Yeah, but to you don't have the buff of the brig and the, that uh, demand it wouldn't be as for strong. staying so tight, right? Right, but the three tanks would still be very powerful and it would still be less engaging to watch. Um, so that's my first argument. The second would be that um, simplicity is key. We don't want to add little nuances like that to the game that can make Overwatch any more difficult to uh, access as it already is. It's already kind of hard to watch for newcomers. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we do 2-2-2, not only have the developers gone on record saying it makes balancing easier, yeah. um, so we get less problematic things like Brig for one year in the future. I don't think anyone predicted goats would happen when they Surely introduced no. the, uh, Brig, Brig to the right. to the roster. Yeah. So I can understand that from a developer perspective. I just, from a player perspective, want the freedom. I want to see those moments where the teams like suddenly are playing some two, two, ridiculous two, two, comp. There's like no, uh, but it's always just going to be you. DPS oh wow, well, they picked the two. The running Torb Sim as their two DPS. That's wacky. You never know. I mean, we saw Florida like this weekend swap off the uh, you know goats for the last point of Gibraltar against Houston, mm. as Houston was brought to really shove that uh, payload all the way to the end. Zephyr from Diva went to Bastion, right? I mean, you're saying they can't do that anymore, but the DPS character could also switch to Bastion. Nothing stopping him from doing it. Right. So we still get that variety. Is there any potential chance that they're gonna uh, you know, list, say, Roadhog. Like, a lot yeah. of people call him just a fat DPS. Mm -hmm. Could he be put in sort of a nebulous zone of, like, you can have a comp where you have... Oh, like a special subcategory where either could play Yeah, because, I mean, originally there were four categories before uh, yeah, Sim um, got moved into support. Yeah, it was offense, defense, defense but not just damage. tank, and support. Yeah. yeah, so could we see a potential in, in this 2-2-2? where some heroes get flagged as like, okay, this guy, because like May is kind of a soft tank in certain I see what you're ways saying. also. Yeah, again, simplicity is key. I think I think we just keep it 2-2-2, two, 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 yeah. and then introduce a lot more tank options that serve more damagey roles, which like mm. we've been due for that for a while. All our tanks are rather defensive in nature. Um, the one offensive one in nature is maybe Wrecking Ball, but yeah. he doesn't seem like um, he was I going to be a main tank in the first place, right? All that threatening of the tanks. Exactly. Personally. Yeah. But like we're gonna get a big boy soon that's more offensive oriented. I'm positive to yeah. enable kind of more DPSy playstyles if 222 is a thing. I, I promise you. Are we due for another tank next? I thought we we're getting. Yes, another... we are. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're due for a tank next for sure. Because hmm. we got Wrecking Ball around the time of finals last year, and since then we've had like three releases since him. So it makes yeah. sense to rotate the category back. Right. Right. I'm not entirely sure, but I've. Well, I was going to ask, I mean, given the, the rise of Sombra. Ash, Baptiste. Yeah, Baptiste were the last one, so yeah, we are in DP line tank. for another yep. tank. So will it be a tank that maybe has a bit of a specialization in doing spy checking? Because ultimately, if Sombra is the new meta, and really to counter Honestly. Sombra, you're going to need a May or a Winston. Give him a turret gun, like, like, kind of like D.Va, but also give him a shield. Just tune it in the way they're unique and kind of allow them to not occupy this occupy a unique space in the meta that serves mm. a certain role, but doesn't push away others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think having like, let's say, 
a main tank with the turret gun plus Diva. You can spy check all you want. Or just a main give them a defense. Like a sonar ability. Yeah, or I love. I love it. Yeah, let's talk to Blizzard. Get those sonar. patented down. Get you some uh, some cash in your po uh, your pocket. All right, <laughs> coined it right here. That's all we got for you on Esports and Thirty today. Thank you to Paintbrush. Thank you to Ron. Tomorrow we've got an FGC and Smash doubleheader with Brody and Drew, which of course will be live right here on Squad. Till then, hit that social button, and we'll see you all in the future.